One of the biggest criminals in human history. And she was arrested without incident. Yet true justice has not been served. Galen Maxwell just got put away for 20 years. So she was supplying kids for all these f***ing pedos, right? Where's the list? Is it is it, as that just gets like... The names of which we may never know. And the scale of which we haven't even begun to fathom. I've had the story for three years. I've had this interview with Virginia Roberts. We would not put it on the air. Then the palace found out that we had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew and threatened us a million different ways. There will come a day when we will realize Jeffrey Epstein was the most prolific pedophile this country has ever known. This is very much the family business for the Maxwell family. They're an intelligence family. Dad was a super spy for the Mossad. He had a media empire. He was a, a, a conglomerate in the UK. Uh, her sisters are very deep in tech. And, you know, she ran the pedo ring. But one aspect of Ghislaine's business seems to have slipped through the cracks, an unknown part of her story, the likes of which is truly terrifying. A project she was running to own the oceans. Is my hair good? Do I? It's okay. <laughs> What is important about the ocean? Why are we even here? Why do we care? I invite my dear friend, Gillian Maxwell, to tell us how we can own the oceans. You have three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please. I'll do my best. The high seas make up 47% of our planet, but they are the least explored and least governed part of it. A British businesswoman now is hoping to change the status quo by turning the oceans into an online country known as the Terramar Project, a global ocean community. At first glance, it would appear that Maxwell had a soft spot for the environment. The ocean is absolutely vital to all planetary life systems. I call it the blue heart of the planet. So much so that she has been campaigning for years, showing off her Terramar project, a nonprofit organization focused on the well being of the oceans. In 2012, I founded the Terramar project. The ocean is the next frontier, it's the next big debate, it's the next big grab of of space. But Maxwell's philanthropic heart comes into question when you dig a little deeper. It becomes obvious that her project is less about helping the environment and more about owning and controlling the oceans. 71% of the planet is ocean. 64% of that ocean lies outside of any single country's jurisdiction. And under the law, that 64% of the ocean belongs to each and every one of you in this room. So the assets of that 64% are yours. The fish, the oil, the gas, the diamonds. She also really seems to like the fact that this area has no governance, a subject which she gave speeches on to the most powerful and elite individuals of our time. In fact, she gave several of these speeches to the United Nations. She controls the oceans around the world. Because one thing is clear. You can't break the law if you make the law. It's an area that's not governed by a single entity. It's a mess of incoherent laws, unenforced laws, and no laws. That's half our planet we're talking about. The world is divided in two. An area that we know well that has laws and regulations, and an entire 45% of the planet that has basically no rules. It is effectively like the Wild West. It is hard to say with certainty what her true intentions were, but what we do know is that she seems to continuously emphasize the utility of the ocean and how much humans rely on it. They produce more than 50% of the oxygen that we breathe. They feed uh, over 16% of the global population. 90% of commerce move, moves by ship. 
the ocean controls our weather. And if you control the oceans, as well as the rules that go along with them, then you are an unregulated and unstoppable force. So I really want the people, each and every one of us, seven billion of us on the planet, to come together, to sign up, to get your passport, to make your voice heard so that the UN and each ambassador can hear what's what we want and all politicians know that no sustainable ocean means we won't vote them back into power. If we won't vote them back into the power, then they're out. We'll find someone who will. Why exactly is she so focused on owning the oceans? And why is her project specifically targeting the Arctic Ocean? I think that there's little clandestine activity happening in the Arctic, but the truth is we don't really know because the United States and Canada aren't really sure what ships are transiting there now. But I think it's a bit of a stretch to say that uh, Al-Qaeda or international terrorism or other transnational crimes such as drugs or human trafficking will go through the Arctic because it's such a, a long, arduous, still cold place. This is Scott Borgerson, military officer, tech entrepreneur, and former secret husband of Maxwell. He sat on the board of Terramar and ran a company called Cargo Metrics, a company whose sole focus is creating fully autonomous, giant, industrial, self-driving ships. He described it as the NSA of global trade. So the Arctic again is becoming central as the ice recedes, opens up these oil and gas resources, and the potential for shipping shortcuts as well. Shipping shortcuts, automated cargo ships, and unregulated water passages create a perfect opportunity to covertly transport anything. Borgerson also held other positions of power. He sat atop the Council on Foreign Relations, one of the most prestigious think tanks in the world. It turns out that Epstein was a member as well and a big donor. In 2014, Maxwell gave a speech to the organization pitching her Terramar project. How do you um, teach kids to care about the ocean and being part of a, a curriculum? I taught a school in, uh, through Skype in the classroom where 14 children of the age of 13, not one had been, not one of the children had been to the ocean, which was amazing to me. <laughs> I noticed that my speech today was leveraging technology to create a global ocean community. I'm going to change that on you, and I'm going to leverage technology to create a new country. Why would someone want to turn the oceans into a country? What could possibly be the motivation behind that? Surely this project has nothing to do with her other efforts of running a global child sex trafficking ring. Right? Right, 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 right. This facade breaks down immediately when you look into the players involved with the project. Those that emerge are not environmentally friendly activists, but a who's who of names found in Epstein's Black Book. Richard Branson, for example, promoted Terramar early on. However, after Epstein's scandal broke in 2019, Branson quickly distanced himself, claiming that he had never met the sex offender. We later found out that Branson was both in Epstein's Black Book and on his calendar. It is worth noting that Branson and Maxwell both had submarine licenses. Maxwell got plenty of practice piloting subs when she dated her ex-boyfriend, Ted Wade. In fact, the tech billionaire had a submarine put aboard his yacht just for Maxwell. Wade's check writing helped secure Maxwell's place at big social gatherings and conferences, which was very helpful in getting the Terramar project off the ground. Write me a check. You are kidding me. The list of notable figures goes on. Meet Nobel Prize winner and one of Terramar's founding citizens, Professor Murray Gelman. Gelman has received financial support from Epstein, appeared in Epstein's Black Book, and has visited several of Epstein's properties. Bill and Hillary Clinton were also involved in Maxwell's project. 
The Terramar project, which was officially supported by the UN Sustainable Development Goals, made a $1.25 million commitment to the Clinton Global Initiative. I'm Lynn Maxwell, the founder of the Terramar project. We're here today to talk about uh, the role of OSINs in the Sustainable Development Goals and the Trusteeship Council of the United Nations. This was part of an effort to form a Sustainable Oceans Alliance, as they called it. The Clinton Global Initiative announced a commitment to action for the Terramar project. With all this funding, you'd expect lots of action. But when you look at the numbers, things don't seem to add up. The tax returns of Terramar are a bit odd. They receive some money here and some money there, but most notably, a massive loan from Maxwell herself totaling over half a million dollars, which on its surface isn't that weird. They had a lot of outgoing expenses. But what were all those outgoing expenses? Well, we don't know. One tax expert told the New York Times, I don't know if suspicious is the word I'd use, but to generate those kind of fees, a lot more would have to be going on than this would reflect. He also said that Terramar's accounting and legal fees were also unusually high, given the size and activity of the organization. Similar to how Epstein used events in order to get close to influential figures, Maxwell used the Terramar project to do the same. We need the ocean, and if the ocean isn't healthy, and we don't have the fish and the uh, predators that live there, then there's no definitive science, but it's not good. This is an area in which Maxwell is an expert. She is labeled a socialite for this very reason. She was a master at cozying up to the right people in order to compromise them. It seems like Maxwell's entire life has been dedicated to mastering the art of deception, an art that seems to run in the family. For starters, Maxwell's father was an Israeli super spy and her sisters have been accused of facilitating him in selling bug software to the US government and foreign governments. Her sisters, Christine and Isabel, both have been accused of being involved in Epstein's operation, each of which have amassed great power in the tech industry. Now, her sister Isabel sits on the World Economic Forum. Look at her bio. Notice the Blue World Alliance. This was actually the precursor to Ghislaine's Terramar project. The phone number for Terramar has been disconnected and their website has been shut down ever since Jeffrey Epstein's arrest in 2019. Let's take a look here at their defunct website. Again, we see Richard Branson. Epstein and Maxwell not only had a history of infiltrating science, but also entertainment. In 1985, Maxwell hosted a fundraiser called the Happy Family Disney Day. The black and white photos show her posing with kids and presenting a check for the Save the Children Fund. In 2014, CNN actually did an investigation into Disney and ended up finding out that 35 of their employees arrested between 2006 and 2014 had been accused of sex crimes involving children. Now, in 2023, CNN calls anyone who believes in such things a QAnon conspiracy theorist. Ironic, I know. Although we live in a world full of misinformation, the phrase conspiracy theorist is now used as a weapon to hide truth and smear the people who seek it. Truth is being drowned out in an ocean of lies. So what exactly was the Terramar Project? Was it just a strange attempt to get in close with elite and powerful people? Was it just another part of her and Epstein's operation? Or did she really care about the environment? Here is my passport to Terramar. 
Thank you.